Till now, we learnt about fluid replacement in gastroenteritis. Now we shall see what other drugs are to be advised and given. I have tried to stress the importance of fluid replacement because it is the most important thing in gastroenteritis. The child will get well with only fluids, no drugs, but not with drugs without fluids. At the same time, it is important to control the intestinal infection and hasten the mucosal recovery by giving appropriate drugs. To control infection, we give an intestinal antibiotic. Actually, most of the cases of gastroenteritis are due to viral infection. So, antibiotics are not needed. Antibiotics may be given only to those cases with fever, blood in the stools or severe diarrhea. But in practice, a mild antibiotic syrup is always prescribed, usually ofloxacin, septran, gramoneg, that is nalidixic acid or cholestin. And if bacterial infection is suspected due to fever, severe diarrhea or blood and mucus or foul stools or if the child is malnourished then injectable higher antibiotics like gentamicin, amikacin and cephalosporins should be given. Then the symptomatic treatment. If the child has vomiting, give syrup ondansetron or syrup perinom. If the child has intestinal colics and is crying, give syrup spasmindon. If frequency of the stools is more, give tab loperamide half tablet TDS. The skin around the anus may get inflamed or excoriated if it remains wet with the watery stools. So after every motions, clean and dry the buttocks, apply talcum powder and if redness of the skin is seen, apply zinc paste or siloderm ointment. It is very very important to keep the skin around the anus dry. Apart from this, we consider three more drugs. A new drug is now commonly used that is Resicadotril. Ridotil 15 mg sachet dissolved in water is given three times a day if the motions are watery. It improves intestinal absorption of water and reduces fluid loss. A very nice concept, but is still considered to be of doubtful value. The second drug is lactobacillus. Whenever higher antibiotics are given, or if diarrhea is prolonged for more than three days, then the normal intestinal flora gets disturbed or destroyed. So we must prescribe lactobacillus, for example, lactiflora sachet in water once daily, it helps to restore normal healthy intestinal flora and must be given after higher antibiotic treatment. Another new and commonly accepted concept is to supplement zinc 20 mg per day for 2 weeks to reduce watery diarrheas. Prescribe Zyoral or ZND syrup or 20 mg dispersible tablet once a day for 15 days. And in recurrent cases, continue it for 4 to 6 months. At the end, understand that gastroenteritis is easily preventable. Simple hygienic precautions will prevent most cases of gastroenteritis. Instruct the mother to clean the nipples before breastfeeding. More care should be taken if the child is bottle fed. Boil the bottle and the milk before every feeding. Improper cleaning and boiling of the bottle is the reason behind many diarrheas. Also, weaning should not be delayed. At the end of one year, the child should be eating everything that the family eats, only that it should be in a soft form and without chilies. Many times, one and a half to two years old children are still taking only milk, with the result that they are malnourished and prone to develop gastroenteritis and other infections. So proper feeding at appropriate age is extremely important. These simple practical instructions should be given by you to the families under your care 
even if they have not asked for your advice. Most children under 5 years will get 1 to 3 mild episodes of diarrhea in a year. But if treated in time and with proper drugs and fluids, there will be no cause for worry and no dehydration. To end this lecture, let me revise what to look for and examine in a case of child with watery motions. Ask about the frequency and quantity of the motions. Is the child thirsty? Does it drink water very eagerly? Look at the skin turgor by pinching the skin over the abdomen to raise a fold and see how rapidly it flattens out when released. If anterior fontanelle is present, is it turgid or sunken? Are the eyeballs sunken? When has the child last passed urine and how much? Is the urine output scanty? Then, is the pulse of good volume or rapid and thready? How is the respiration? Rapid, shallow or deep? And is the child alert, drowsy or unconscious? Considering all these findings, decide the degree of dehydration and then institute the treatment plan A, B or C.